Hi, I'm Gary Miyakawa. We're here today to talk a little bit about the DMA 7000 product line from Polycom. Let's look at some of its primary functions. It's a conference manager. It's out there trying to distribute voice and video calls uh, over multiple media servers. Now, what's a media server? Media server is, by Polycom's definition, a multipoint control unit. Uh, the current product line includes the RMX series of products, the RMX 1500, 2000, and 4000. Now, we also do support some of the Codian bridges, too, and they can be jointly supported underneath a DMA. Now, what's DMA out there trying to do? It's trying to uh, simplify the uh, resource management for the bridges. One of the problems we've seen is that we can easily run out of resources. So what DMA does is spread the call across uh, bridges that have available resources so that the calls go through first time and with the best possible quality. Uh, we also improve the efficiency of those bridges because we do a load balancing of those uh, bridges that are under the management of uh, DMA. That helps out to uh, allow us to spread the calls out over a wider area, possibly geographically dispersed into pools in Europe and uh, the Americas and maybe in the Far East. We'll talk about that in a few minutes in some other slides. Recent updates to DMA has also brought it the uh, capability to be a call server. Provides complete end endpoint registration uh, and call routing for both SIP and 323 calls. Um, uh, also have the ability to do a gateway call uh, between SIP and 323. So that allows a SIP endpoint to call into a 323 endpoint and vice versa. Makes it very handy when we're trying to unify multiple uh, UC environments where we may have uh, different call plans and we're trying to get everything into a single dial plan. Uh, we can help out there, hopefully, with the uh, DMA. One of the things that we found over time is that the RMX, even as large as the RMX 4000 is, is sometimes not big enough. So what we've done is allowed DMA to sit over those bridges and to hand out those resources as required. And should some of the resources uh, not be available because of a bridge being down or a maintenance issue on a bridge, then that bridge would automatically be excluded from providing resources. So today, our current limitations are 64 bridges, wow, that's a lot, and 5,000 active participants. That's a lot of people. Now, an active participant is anyone who's registered to take a call. That could be a desktop solution. It could be a, an iPad or an Android mobile solution. It could be a Tamburg, could be life size. Anyone who's registered in uh, will take a license in that situation. Now, what we're doing is virtualizing the resources, trying to make them uh, virtually available anytime, somewhere out there in the cloud, um, and make it easy. Now, the cloud may be owned by the client in this situation, okay? We have had a couple companies come to us asking for something even bigger. And so what we've done, uh, the center point, that virtualized resource, what we call a super node, because it has two nodes, two servers, and so they have a redundancy between them. Uh, and what we've done is taken that a step further and added clustering. We've added super clustering capability. What this allows us to do is to take five nodes or super nodes and bring them together and allowing them to register everybody together. As you can see now, my maximum registration is about 75,000 endpoints uh, with a limitation of 25,000 active calls at any one time. One of the nice things about the super cluster it can, is that it can be geographically dispersed or distributed around the world, as I mentioned. 